So what are the key words in the question of how to build a better world? What does this question hinge on? What are the key words here? Where do we begin trying to answer it? That's how I've been trained to think as a student here at UEA when I'm faced with these queries. The emphasis is always on a reali realizing an objective, concrete approach. From that experience, I'd be tempted to go with how. <coughs> how do we build a better world? How might we, myself standing up here, you in your chairs listening intently to all I have to say, I hope, <laughs> how do we know where to begin? It's not an immediately clear answer. An end goal as overwhelming as the world's betterment is very difficult to contemplate, right? It's such a big place, the world, that any attempt to change it is easy to dismiss as well beyond one individual's means. But the attitude of giving up is dangerous to me. It breeds complacency and allows it to fester. It allows for the anticipation of mediocrity, or worse, something unacceptable that is being allowed to happen. You've seen that going through life. I know I have as well. More corruption going unchallenged, another headline in the news. A recent one of those I looked at dealt with the effect of drink and sex culture in, of all places, university campuses. Who knew? So those are a natural staple of the student experience. But uh, in reading further, I learned how they can feed into ladism, into lad culture, and how that can therefore, therefore normalize and then legitimize the idea of students as sexually incontinent and vulnerable on that score to incidents of assault. And that thinking is widespread enough now that any attempt to change it is, very, is really going to be a very broad undertaking. That has not stopped some individuals from endeavoring to try. Their campaign is the reason that I know about all this, the reason I'm raising these issues now. And it's important that they're raised, as I think the title of this campaign in itself sums up. That is never OK, changing the culture changing the culture, never okay. Remember, this is the work of a few individuals who simply did not want to settle for the status quo when there was room and possibility for improvement. That thinking alone was enough, enough to birth and propel this movement that asks all involved to revise their standards and their actions for the better. So what good reason is there for us not to apply that ethos to our own thinking? I can tell you it's an attitude that anybody meaning to better the world will be championing. And it's a mindset that transforms our goal here from a far off wistful vision into a plausible reality. That, and as I said before, a clear objective idea of where to begin. Now lucky for us, the notion of continuous improvement is a very flexible one. And there's no need to take my word for it. There is a wealth of theory out there as to how that can be applied to our own behaviors. There's a word in Japanese for this very concept that refers as well to its own philosophy. That is Kaizen. In Jan Sutter's aptly named book, Making That Leap, Kaizen is defined as the accumulation of a few small changes for the better over a long period of time. Doing things 1% better every day. 1% is small. That doesn't mean the change itself is small, especially not when it's built up after every day. And Sutter even emphasizes how Kaizen relies on that, relies on that and everybody getting involved to make that improvement, to generate those results. That exemplifies what I believe to be true about building a better world. We may not all be connected, nor be shared colleagues in a business, the example from which I lift Kaizen, it doesn't matter. The idea itself, that can be applied to anything, from the professional world, the whole world, to our own lives. The reason I joined Never Okay's campaign in the first place is because I wanted to become a better person. And in, in heightening the standards by which I held myself, I was working unconsciously at first 
to realize the same for my environment, for the world around me. If improvement can be pushed for in any situation or context, be that a commendable world goal like fighting poverty, or something so simple as increasing individual productivity, then that improvement should always be encouraged. Because when we maximize that, when we maximize our best selves, we maximize the contributions that we can make to ourselves, to our loved ones, and to the world. We maximize that, and we multiply it. Now, this is an accumulation over time. As I said, it's a long process. We're running a marathon here, not a sprint. But that doesn't mean it needs to be laborious, nor unrealistic. To each day, just give a little of your time to making that day 1% better than the last day. 1%. 1% will grow, given time. And we will grow along with it, into better citizens, the builders, the key component of our better world. And I know that you can do that. I know that this can be achieved. All of you, we can do that. Don't tell me that 1% of your effort towards every day is too much. It's not true, especially not when you think about how you've already begun doing it. Don't look surprised. You have. You have, because it's just being here tonight is enough. All of us here being here tonight, myself, you in the audience, my fellow speakers, our lovely organizers, we are already making the first step in how we think about how to build a better world. And if that first step, if that for you is the first of many, if you want to soldier on in the quest for a better world, excellent. Really, it's good to know, because it tells me that in looking for where to start with this in how to build a better world, you don't need to go any further than yourself. Thank you. <laughs>